Hey guys, so today's video we are going to break down the European Team of the Season release. We're going to break down all of the cards, all of the sets, the values, and really what the future of these cards looks like. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get into it. Alright, so we'll start first with the 93 Henrik Tomerness. Tomerness. Comments will let me know. Six foot one left-handed defenseman. He is 185. He's got fly the zone as well as workhorse, gladiator as well as Thief, which, again, is pretty good for a defenseman. But at this stage of the game, obviously, I think Gladiator would be where you'd want to go. He does have Spark as an option as well. I think Spark's a little bit better than Workhorse. But Fly the Zone is still the best. A 93 speed, 93 acceleration, 99 agility, a great shot. Body checking at 92. He is six foot one, but only 185. But he does have that gold truculence ability, which I think really raises his value. Do I think that he would be among the best defensemen at the end of the season no just because of his size or lack thereof in terms of his weight but gold truculence makes him valuable for the rest of the season the other abilities really not worth activating maybe elite edges if he would be your first defenseman uh but he does have some room to grow now with european players that play in the european leagues it's less certain that they will get regular upgrades so this might come down to ea just every so once in a while being like okay here's an upgrade to henrik tom Tomerness, Tomern. Following him, we've got the 93 Martin Ruzika, 5'11", 174, so a little bit smaller, is a centerman and right-handed. Does come with that gold quick draw, but does have a great set of superstar abilities with no contest, unstoppable force, and close quarters. 93 speed, 93 acceleration with those abilities active, so he's not elite right now, which I think does cause some issues. Gold quick draw is great. He's only got 89 face-offs, though, so again, I think at this stage of the game, if you're going to use someone with gold quick draw you want them to have 99 face-offs to get that certain face-off win when you need it but unstoppable force as well as close quarters is a great set of abilities he is built more like a winger in my opinion and again because he is in the european leagues less certain of upgrades one of the best releases in terms of the high-end competitive play when it comes to the 93 miko ranton and his team of the year card last year was among the best for the entire season does have workhorse as well fly the zone and does have distributor or buzzing whatever one you want to go with in terms of the acceleration or speed boost so that is a big value getting three skating synergies that all give plus three is a huge advantage now even though he is only have 93 speed and 92 acceleration he's six foot four 215 with gold unstoppable force making him a slightly less effective yaramir yager card that will for free upgrade to 99 that is obviously one of the best left-handed cards in the game if you are are looking for a left-handed winger that you can lock in for the rest of the season team of the season Miko Rantanen is a card that chase has silver close quarters and that's all you really need you can throw elite edges on him as well because he is a little bit bigger to give him that kind of cut ability but even just gold unstoppable force this card is going to be absolutely brutal to go up against even after just a few upgrades with Colorado being a certain playoff contender you're going to get some regular updates as well which is huge one of the more sought-after ones, the 93 David Pasternak gets a team of the season. It's that agility, man. Like, I don't understand at the beginning of the year who at EA was so pissed off. Like, I feel like a Leafs fan just got on the horn and called up the ratings adjuster and said, hey, let's absolutely crush David Pasternak's agility because at 93, he's only at 89. Does have gold close quarters, which is one of the best abilities. Silver unstoppable force, which is awesome. And then he's got some other fun ones, obviously elite edges, which will help make up for that brutal agility rating and I think probably one you would have to activate if you want him to play as impactful as some of the other high-end cards that are out right now and silver 1t 1t is interesting I've talked about this a lot in prior years I think 1t on forwards is a little bit tough to justify because you have to get them in the spot to actually activate the one timer to take the one timer that is and because those low far side wristers are so impactful in NHL 23 I think that just 1t on defenseman is a little bit more uh easy to activate and regularly used. However, there has been a two-on-one situation where if you have one T, you can basically pass the puck at before the face-off dots, and if they've got one T, it'll actually go in. So something to keep in mind, David Pasternak will be a great card at 99, but again, uh, when you consider all of the cards that are out right now, there are better. Following him, we've got the 93 Sammy Niku, the 6'1", 194 right-handed, sorry, left-handed 
right defenseman, a lot like Mackenzie Weger. Well, I guess he would be the opposite, but nonetheless, he's got workhorse fly the zone and then gladiator uh, as his third option does get his body checking up to 98 gold stick him up, which I've talked about is a kind of 50 50 ability. I think stick him up is really impactful on defensemen that are bigger than six foot three and up. And the reason being is because their reach is so much more impactful. Talk about the Victor Hedman X factor for a majority of the year until he became kind of too slow. Uh, uh, but on the smaller defenseman, because Pochecks are just like, just so hit or miss in 23, I'm not a huge fan of it, but at only four ability points, this is still going to be impactful. You've got Silver Shutdown as well to help make up for the fact he doesn't have Truculence, and Seeing Eye, 1T, again, kind of some fun abilities to go with him there. He does only have 93 speed and acceleration, and I, don't, I say only in the sense that he is going to require some upgrades to get into the higher echelon, especially because we're, you know, almost in April, but 98 bottom Body checking makes up for, you know, the fact he's only 194. So all in all, a very good left-handed defenseman card. Patrick Carl Vist is up next. Six foot one, 216, right-handed right winger. Does have three speed or skating synergies with gold close quarters, no contest, crease crasher, big tipper, snipe, and unstoppable force. Again, close quarters and unstoppable force is proven to be just an absolute deadly combo. I love big tipper just because it's so fun to use. And no contest definitely has its bonuses as well. 94 speed, 93 acceleration is definitely usable. He has almost 99 hands stats except for that deking rating and great defensive stats as well he is built a little bit bigger at 216 so definitely a viable right-handed winger card there hasn't been a lot of them this year for whatever reason so could be a sneaky option for you again because he's a european league player though there's no guarantee on consistent upgrades to him yasin elise i'm probably saying that wrong the 93 left-handed left winger with again th they've made the synergies pretty much the same across the board so workhorse fly the zone you can also go spark here um or wingman whatever one you want and then gladiator does have silver truculence gold close quarters and unstoppable force which again boring but hey uh at least you know when it comes to competitive play or at least cards that you want to get the most of your money's worth uh they kind of need to have that if you're going to play online 95 speed 93 acceleration a great shot as well hand stats a little low that deking at 88 but still a very good left-handed winger card there there is a lot of them, though, so this probably loses a little bit of value for me because of that. Roman Cervenka, the 93 overall, gets a team of the season who's always one of the better cards uh, throughout the beginning of the year. 5'11", 194 centerman with gold quick drop, but only 90 face-off rating. However, Gladiator can become Thief to help out with that just a little bit. Unstoppable Force, Elite Edges, as well as no contest. Wheels not worth activating on him. Just kind of a ho-hum card now in terms of other centermen. Like, if we're talking Talking about centermen at this stage of the game, if you want them to be impactful, uh, you're going to want them to be around 6'1 at least and above because that's the most important position defensively other than obviously your defenseman. And there's a lot of great centermen now, especially with like Holy and Team of the Year Matthews, for example. I love quick draw, but again, not on players without 99 faceoffs at this point. Unstoppable Force and Elite Edges is on every single card there is. So I think that there's probably better values out there, but still a very good centerman card. I would have to assume the Vesna winner this year, the 94 Linus Olmark, goaltenders all year, uh, just a joke position because of the broken animations, but he's six foot five, 212 with 95 speed, and almost certainly to get a 99 very quickly. The Boston Bruins look like a powerhouse. He's probably going to win the Vesna, so he will get regular upgrades. If you want a goaltender that can set it and forget it, Linus Olmark is him. However, the, if you're going after this card, then you are among the richest of the rich. We're talking Dubai buy hut money finally a great elias Pettersson card i've talked about elias Pettersson a lot over the last three years a six foot two great height in this game and definitely effective but because he's 176 he him and mitch marner the ones i kind of always harp on the most they get knocked off the puck so easily gold quick draw comes on the elias Pettersson card and that completely changes things up he's got elite edges as well which is a really impactful for wingers but even just gold unstoppable force and you're laughing he's had a great season vancouver probably not making the the playoffs though so you're gonna have to rely on some inconsistent upgrades there he will have 95 acceleration speed and 97 agility gladiator does help out with the body checking which is great and you could go thief if you want to play him at center as well so all in all a very very good card and obviously for vancouver fans
hands a must in my opinion. Then we've got the 94 Nikita Kucherov with gold wheels, close quarters, 1T, unstoppable force, elite edges, and puck on the string. Very good skater at 96 speed, 97 acceleration. Kucherov cards are very good and with unstoppable force that will help the fact that he's a little bit smaller. I find that he's more effective at the beginning of the year. Close quarters is great, elite edges as well, so he kind of checks the boxes there. Kind of a waste with gold wheels on this card. Again, when it comes to wheels, you want to put him on a card that's 99 because then you make sure that the, he is the whatever card it is, is the fastest on the ice. 99 hand stats though, 99 shot. You can't go wrong with Nikita Kucherov, other than the fact that there are so many good left-handed wingers at this point. My guy, Eric Carlson, the front runner for the Norris Trophy, and my god, I just wish he had this season three years ago. But nonetheless, he actually is worth his contract somehow at 32 years of age. Um, and as a Sharks fan, the fact that they might finish last with a 100-point defenseman, wild. But hey, nonetheless, six foot 190, 97 speed, 96 acceleration, does have three skating abilities. The issue here is that you're going to use him like Kale McCarr. So if you have Kale McCarr, this Eric Carlson card is not going to be all that great for you because you've already got a slightly worse version of Kale McCarr already, or with this card on top. He has no real defensive ability so the way that you have to use him is to break the puck out and beeline whether it be a diagonal cross or straight line down the boards and then when you get him at the point you're working around at the top using the agility and great skating for tip shots or wrist shots from the point seeing eye help so with that heat seeker a little bit but i think that's kind of pointless uh and unstoppable force is actually kind of sneaky if you go for tip shots and you work it around and use the point a lot because you don't want to lose the puck at the point when you're working it around with him. So uh, no defensive abilities definitely hurts him. He is built like a perfect winger. But that being said, still one of my favorite players this season as a Sharks fan and a card I'm going to try and get. Jenny Hirokoski, who's been well represented in NHL 23, 5'5", 137, left-handed defenseman, three skating abilities, and probably the best defensive abilities here. We've got gold truculence, which helps make up for the fact she's 5'5", 137, silver stick em up seeing eye, 1T, and unstoppable force as well as no contest. Unfortunately, at this stage, unless you are trying to make it, you know, a female theme team, something like that, you're just really going to be put at a disadvantage using this card. I remember the Ayaka Toyo or Ayoko Toka. I mean, I always mess up that name. The Nations of Hockey female defenseman. I remember uh, playing a lot of games where they were using Truculence, and it did work, but as it went along in the event, the higher rated cards that got higher strength and balance, it really didn't. So um, even though you can use her and it will help the fact that she's a little bit smaller, um, just going to be awfully tough to use and not worth the investment, in my opinion. However, worth the investment would be the 95 Leon Dreisaitl. He becomes one of the best centermen in the game for the rest of the game in my opinion 62208 gold unstoppable for silver quick draw tape to tape third eye not worth using one t more useful for wingers and defensemen and puck on a string not worth using however that being said because of his size silver quick draw and gold unstoppable force you've got a great centerman uh he will require like just a couple more upgrades however he will get them edmonton's gonna make the playoffs you know if mcdavid's scoring leon's probably getting a point so he is going to become a 99 probably one of the first ones and at that point, you've got one of the best centermen in the game. So if you missed out on the team of the year, Austin Matthews, Leon Dreisaitl would be a great card or a great consolation if you want to call that. Uh, but he is going to be a great card for the rest of the year. And finally, a great Roman Yossi card. The team of the year one, super disappointing in my opinion for the cost you had to pay. His X factor is always just not worth it other than the fact that you get to cash it in for team of the year or team of the season. However, he's got three skating abil or synergies with 95 speed, 95 acceleration gold stick him up but it's the silver truculence finally Roman Yossi getting truculence which helps out quite a bit he is going to get up to a 99 fairly quickly and he's already a 96 so he's already one of the higher rated cards in the game if you have his team of the year card I'm 100% cashing it in and using the team of the year or team of the season version over the team of the year version uh, but if you're lucky enough to get his left-handed team of the season card then uh you know congrats he's a great card and then lastly the 99 Willie Nylander obviously 
99. He is does have a fantasy card out, which is why he is so high rated. He's got silver or sorry, gold elite edges. Yoink, which is you know, you have to use the penalty button to get it, so not worth it at all. Silver close quarters is great. Make it snappy, he's just no way to quantify. Unstoppable force is great. At 99 across the board, you can't go wrong. He's six foot, but 204. Good abilities. Very, very good card. You can play him. Um, obviously, you're gonna play him as a winger. He's only got 88 on the draw at 99, but you're not gonna be upset with a 99 William Nylander. All right, guys, on to the sets. Now, with the European team of the season release, we did get power-up collectible sets. Uh, so if you have a lot of power-up icons that are your favorite players or you need X-Factor cards upgraded to cash them in for their team of the season variants, uh, there is a lot of options here for the power-up collectibles. Uh, a lot of them are team of the week or, or prime time things, and that's the cost is just not going to be worth it. But maybe you've got a lot saved from prior events. I really don't understand why they go this route and don't just allow power-up collectibles to be cashed in a lot like what they do for event collectibles but here we are that's ea i don't understand their economy as the year goes around uh but i just want to mention that they are there all right so let's talk about the sets and the costs so it still requires 35 team of the season collectibles for a week to trade in pack that's 560,000 coins in value they're going for about 16,000 coins each it is a one of two choice pack which is probably one one of the most frustrating aspects of EA NHL right now and how team of the season is done because not all cards are available to be made and actually acquire which is brutal it is a terrible decision I can't stand it uh, but it is what it is this is the reality of the situation now unlike the young stars release there isn't a there isn't as many bad options if you were to do this set I will say that um, you know I guess the, the the brutal one if you are a competitive player would be be something like Hirokoski and maybe Olmark because, you know, goaltenders. But even some of the lower-rated European guys, they have abilities that make up for them, so it's not as bad uh, as some of the options for the young stars, but still not worth it at all. Now, taking a look at the cards that have options uh, to be made, Kucherov has one if you make his Milestone Master Set, and again, at 29, we're looking at 464,000 coins, plus his Milestone card. I don't think the Kucherov Kucherov card, unless you are a Tampa fan or a fan of Kucherov, is worth the cost at all. But again, I just want to bring that up. 464,000 coins on top of the uh, on top of the milestone. You can go Leon Dreisaitl, however, with the 95, and then on top of the max X factor, 112,000 coins. I would definitely make that upgrade uh, because of Unstoppable Force and the fact that you don't have to keep upgrading him. That's definitely 100% a trade in if you have Leon Dreisaitl's X factor. Pasternak as well gets a option from his spotlight card at the beginning of the season. That's going to cost 31, 496,000 coins. It's very cheap to make him um, in that sense. So uh, because if you have it at the beginning of the year, the, those master set players were very cheap to make. Uh, 400, about 500,000 coins to make him on top of that. I think that's not a terrible value if you want Pasternak. I think that there are better right-handed wingers though, but he is going to get a lot of upgrades. Obviously, if you have his X factor, I would do that as well well because again what you're saving uh in not having to pay the power up collectible upgrade cost is huge but if you play hut champs regularly like there isn't a lot to spend power up collectibles on so again that might not be the greatest with him the fantasy trade in for nylander there's gonna be like five people that are able to do that 100 do that guys uh just you know gives yourself an option another 99 and his team of the season is uh i think you know slightly better uh just because of the you know all the combos of abilities i mentioned this earlier roman yosi I would definitely do that trade-in. I will be doing that on my God Squad as well. If you have his, team, his X Factor card, I would definitely do that. If you are a fan of Hirokoski and you have her Master Set player item, go ahead. Not worth the value, in my opinion. Uh, but obviously, if you're a fan, yeah, absolutely do that. And then she's got one here. Those are the only sets to guarantee yourself what card you're getting. I really hope they figure out a way where we can acquire whatever team of the season card we want. It's 560000 for a shot at them, and it, I just... I have no I have no words for it boys it sucks it's I'm not a fan all right guys that is gonna do it for me today let me know what you think of the European team of the season release and I'll see you next time have a good one